we want to talk about things that we learned from this season that will be true in the future, right? If No matter what, if we win or lose this game. And what we just talked about is one of those things where it's like, if it doesn't matter if we win or lose, Sam Presti's already changed how this goes. Not just the Thunder were always seen as a great place to develop talent, but going to what you're saying about the time in Vermont and like him reassessing and really reimagining the Thunder. And what we're seeing is the actualization of that vision. Yeah. And what does that mean for like on the court, for the players, for the team, for Coach Dagnall? What are some of the things that we can learn from this season? Um, and what I think, starting with Coach Dagnall, and then I'll let you go, but I just learned that he has an elite offense and a sophisticated defense, and he knows how to deploy them based on his personnel at the highest level. And I think he's an asset to the team, and I really appreciate what he brings. You know, beginning of the season, I, I felt like Coach D, his biggest weakness as a coach was in-game um, changes, in-game decision-making changes, right? Um, and I felt like that was not a knock on him, but that's every young coach's issues, right? Um, and how to listen to the assistant coaches to see what they're having to say. Um he has changed, Coach D has changed that, in my opinion, to becoming one of the best coaches in the league at making game time decisions and changes, especially when it comes to the fourth quarter. And that's where I, I start take a step back and saying, like, we, we saw from the first year uh, that he was coaching the, the defensive improvement, the second year, the offensive improvement, right? The third year, game time decisions, and yes, defense got better. Yes, offense got better. I think we're like top 10 in almost every single statistic out there, right? Bro, it's it's elite. And this is not just because of the players. And I want to say that with all due respect to our players, like we have elite players. But you can have elite players all you want. But if you don't have the discipline in the game, they're just running around with their like chickens with their heads cut off. And what Coach D is able to do is able to say – you know, put your blinders on guys, you know, like, like, you know, horses, right? Get your blinders on. Nothing else matters except what's in front of you right now. Focus on it, understand it. Right. And, and when you do it so much, it becomes habit. So when Shea is taking a shot at the end of the game, last shot, it's habit for him. Why? Because that's what he's doing in practice every single day. Right. Coach is saying, Hey, 10 seconds left on the clock. We're running through this strategy. 10 seconds left on the clock. We're running through this strategy, this type of defense, this type of offense, this is what Coach D has changed, in my opinion. He has changed the atmosphere that's in the Oklahoma City Thunder locker room, practice facilities, and everything else. And when you do that and you see the positivity that's coming out of it, it's it's really powerful. And and I understand that people are going to knock on Coach D because of this or that, but I'm telling you guys, as a 30, what is he, 7, 38-year-old man, he's exactly where he needs to be as a coach. He's learning quickly. He's absorbing it, and he's making the changes that need to be made every single year. And you can see it by the improvement of these players, and you see it in the improvement of the defense and the offense and the way we understand the game. It's elite, and th that's why Coach D has made so many improvements this year, and I, I'm so excited about next year. But the reality is, is that without the players that he has and without the desire like the Sam Presti has drafted these d players and brought them in that have the desire to learn and do whatever it takes for the team to win, Sam would never be there. Coach D would never be there. These guys are guys that they put their trust in for the organization. And what are these young men doing right now? They're showing everybody what they can do, what Shea can do, what J-Dub can do. They're flexing right now. And people are sitting there saying, there's no way that this team should beat the Pelicans. You know, there's no way that this team should beat um, uh, Minnesota. Okay. And then you're hearing if Oklahoma City even gets to the first round, there's no way that they're going to go even bring it to, you know, game six against Denver. And to me, that's inspiring because I believe in this team, man. I, I think this team can not only win the next two games, but put themselves in a position that they can scare the living shit out of Denver. And then all of a sudden, the rest of the NBA be like, ah, what's happening in Oklahoma City? You know, because nobody else understands it right now. Nobody thinks that the Oklahoma City's thunder is any good. They're like, oh, yeah, they just limped in because why? Dallas lost it. That's what I hate. Because it, 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 it null and voids all the work these young men have done this season by saying Dallas 
they tanked. Fuck that. That's why I wanted to win the last game. That's why I wanted this team to prove that they belonged there. You know, like that's what this team needed. And I look at this and now they have an opportunity to say, fuck you guys. We're better than you think. And Dallas only lost because they suck. Yeah, dude. Uh, I dig it, man. And um, I dig the appreciation you have for the effort that these guys put up because in the reality, it, no matter how you slice it, we won 40 games. And the only game 40. that we didn't face up against a team that was, you know, trying absolutely to win was one team that we against Memphis where we put out our, um, you know, third unit also. So it was completely, you know, it was 39 wins by our starters. And you love what that means and we love how – that leads us into you know this game against the Pelicans and really how Coach Degnall is going to handle the situation. Uh, Willie Green on the other sideline, and he's someone that has won in this environment last year. Um, the Pelicans were able to you know get into the playoffs from the play-in game, and you look at it and like we're trying to be the upstart team that can you know let everybody know that this is our rival and that's the path we want to take. And we we play a team that's experienced in that. How much does their experience? you know, give them an advantage in this type of game? Well, I think everything experiences everything in the um, um, playoffs. Um, but to me, um, you know, with their experience, we have experience in Shea and Dort. You know, they've been there. You know, they played against Houston in, what was it, six or seven games, whatever it was. Like, they've been in the big game situation. You know, you don't think Dort learned from that? I mean, like, I guarantee you, he knows exactly how to step up the level. So if it wasn't for those two guys and the fact that Dario has um, played in the uh, minutes, I would say it's a huge advantage. But the reality is that our two best players, two um, best players in their positions, a.k.a. Um, you know, defense and offense, right, Dort and Shea have already got that experience. And I, I think that's going to really help the team really solidify because we already follow Shea. We already followed Dort, and those two guys are leading it. So the experience that you, I would typically say that the Pelicans have, in my opinion, is is not an, um, um, a bonus at this point. Yeah, I was thinking about it. They might have like a little bit of a um, loss of that edge when you've already gone through this experience. And there's an opportunity for us here to, like you said, shock the world, whereas the Pelicans – um, they did that last year, so now if they beat us, it's what everybody expects. So um, it's an you opportunity. Step up. You got to step up to the occasion. And if you don't step up to the occasion, you have no place there. And I think that's the key of that is that the Oklahoma City Thunder, they all know. Coach Steve knows. You listen to it in the locker room. You listen to it in the interviews right now. They all know the spot they got to step up. Well, guess what the Pelicans are probably thinking? I got to do what we did last time. And There's a difference, man. Yeah, it's like going down, going into the locker room down one at halftime. Well, you know, you're not down that much and you feel like you have to fix everything. And that's, we're approaching this hungry. That's going to give us we the want edge. It. We want it bad, bro. Um, so I don't even have to ask Tonight. you who you think you're, is going to win because we always answer the same way. I, I want to say time. this, though. I want to say this. I think, um, I, I think it's going to come down to, um, I, I really think that Shea is going to hit a shot to win the game. But if you don't think that Shea's going to hit it, then look for J-Dub's tip in, baby. So here's what I want to say. I want to ask you right before we get out of here, right? If you were to pick one strategic adjustment, I already have one in mind, so I'll go first. The, kind of a surprise thing. I think Coach it has learned you can't leave Dort on Brandon Ingram. So we're going to see a huge shift to it be mostly J-Dub on Brandon Ingram. And we're, he might score 40, but we're going to leave Dub on an island with Ingram all game. What do you think? I, I think you're absolutely right about that because you got CJ in the pocket. And if CJ goes off on you, you're going to get beat. So who's going to guard CJ? Dort. So mm -hmm. you got two big players right there. I wouldn't be surprised if Coach puts uh, Shea on Bra Brandon Ingram as well. Mm -hmm. uh, share the load for J-Dub, especially if Brandon Ingram starts going off. I think Shea will have to step up and play that position. And Shea, we know he can play some crazy defense. So um, I, I look for that. Um, I also think that uh, I want to say the biggest adjustment we need to make, right, is we need to get Val Valachunas, whatever his name is. Yeah, JV. JV, there we go. Uh, Jonas, 
we need to get his ass in foul trouble early in this game because he always kills us on the offensive go- on boards. I know Jackson Hayes is sitting in there in the uh, um, um, wings right now, but the reality is is that we need to get um, um, VJ, JV, whatever his name is, <laughs> off the board. <laughs> So that's what we need to happen. Dude, I think we need to attack the hole, get to the hole. We're going to turn JV into VJ. The J. The JJ. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the JJ off the boards, baby. All right. So what do we got to do now? I guess we got to close it out because that's it, bro. Where else are we going to go from here, dude? We hope that you guys are going to join us. We're going to be live. Live tonight, baby. I just got my first coffee of the day. We're going early. We hope to get this episode up a little bit early. We hope you guys are having a great day. We know how much this means to all of you. It's a special day. Win or lose, we should all just appreciate the moment. And personally, I'm going to watch the game twice because it helps me. Because I get so, like, I get emotionally tied up. And it's hard to actually really appreciate the moment. So I'm going to go back and watch the game a second time afterwards. I hope you guys do, too, because this should be special. And and listen, guys, make sure you tell somebody you love them. Make sure you tell someone to fuck off today, all right? Fuck off. (laughs) 